Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to Something to Scream About. This is episode 21 and um, we're at the end of January. As you may notice if you're watching the video, it is just me on my own today. Um, Cam is out busy because he is an expecting father, which is very exciting. So um, he's got some fatherly duties to be uh, attending to. So it's just me today. And um, we have a wicked episode in store. I'm joined by one of my old friends, uh, Alex Curson, who is actually a VJ, visual DJ, uh, VFX artist and videographer, photographer, he, he basically does a lot in, in this space. So as you'll find out in, in the interview um, very soon, uh, there's many dimensions to Alex and to what he does. Now, what I really wanted to bring Alex on for is to, to show um, another side of the industry that is really popping off um, at the moment in the in terms of technology and the new things that you can be doing as a live show experience, um, us as a band, uh, we're really trying to push the dimensions of a show and try and really figure out kind of what's going to make or break a really great live experience. Because we want people to leave thinking, wow, you know, that was such an amazing show. Uh, those guys really blew us away with every single aspect. There was no stone left unturned. Um, so, so something that Alex can bring to the table and, and shine a bit of light on is all of these new technologies and things that he's bringing in and implementing in, say, more of the DJ or uh, electronic dance music world. Um, he's, he's bringing in all of these elements and we're trying to sort of grab and, and figure out some, some of what will work in a live setting with a band. Um, and there's going to be lots of takeaways in this. So, so maybe, uh, listen tight and, uh, surely you'll have something to, to take away. Now, if you, uh, have been following along, we also released lately our latest track alter ego that's doing the rounds. Um, it's been a little while in the pipeline, but we're very excited to get that one out. It's been, um, one of my favorites to play and to kind of, uh, to listen to, uh, especially the bass riff at the start. So thanks to everyone for really getting around that and um, sharing it around, whatever you're doing. It's awesome. We've got plenty more music to keep pushing out. So keep an eye out on the socials. Uh, if you want to chat to us online, Twitter is good. I'm chatting to a lot of people on Twitter. It's been fun. Um, there is obviously our Facebook page, our YouTube. We have a lot of uh, tutorials still going off. So make sure you're jumping all around that. Uh, but without further ado, Let's jump into the interview with Alex uh, and uh, hear what he's got to say. So let's go. Yo, what's up, Art Supplies? Here he is, Mr. Kirsten, Mr. Alex Kirsten, or it's just spaz. Just spaz, <laughs> baby. It's just, just spaz. spaz. It's just spaz. Welcome, man. Welcome. Um, uh, first of all, I want to comment uh, on your incredible spaceship that you are sitting in <laughs> yeah thank you welcome to the spaceship enterprises yeah uh, spaceship please enterprises. keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times we're about to go on a pretty crazy ride that's amazing yeah well you yes i agree with that it's spaz adventure is certainly a crazy ride um for those who are just listening alex is just sitting in a nice spaceship background on his video call so it looks like he's commander in chief uh in the the spaceship enterprise so why don't you give yourself a little bit of an intro? Um, I know, like, bro, we go we go back um, a fair few years, so it's really nice to catch up with you and um, shine a little bit of light on what you do and everything that's going on in your life. Um, I personally find it very difficult to keep up with how many things that you manage to do <laughs> all the time. Um, yeah. So if we if you could uh, kind of summarize. I guess what you do and the things that you're involved in and um, we'll start to sort of, yeah, get cracking into a bit of that. So welcome. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So um, Hey guys, Alex Kirsten, AKA Spaz. I'm 35 years old. I'm currently based in Costa Rica, but I'm from New Zealand originally. Um, I've traveled uh, around the world shooting uh, all sorts of events. I'm, I'm a videographer and photographer by trade. I've been working with all the biggest DJs in the world for a long time. Um, as a, I became a VJ in 2009. I played my first show in 2009. Um, as a VJ, I've performed live with uh, Deadmau5, Skrillex, Casper, Cal 
Calvin Harris, Afrojack, Rusko, Nero, Trolley Snatcher, Foreign Biggers, Faster Than Light, <laughs> Dat Sick, Feed Me, Pretty Lights, Avicii, Cascade, and a num number of other amazing DJs and producers. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah, my dad was a DJ for 33 years, and so that's no kind way. of where I get it, where I get it from. Um, and yeah, uh, when COVID happened at, in 2020, um, I kind of got stuck in Australia uh, living with my dad and um, I bought a pair of DJ decks and started learning how to, how to mix. And, you know, I've been a VJ for 13 years now, but I never really learned how to mix uh, music. So bought the, That's so cool. bought so the RX2. Just, just quickly, man, um, what, would you, what would you define a VJ as for those who haven't heard of what a VJ yeah, is? Okay, so a VJ is a visual jockey. So, you know, behind the DJs at these big dance parties, you've got the LED walls with all the big graphics on it. We are the guys that make that happen. Yeah, that's so cool. And then and you're live kind of live mixing the visuals as the DJ is playing. And <laughs> yeah, sort of that's right. Working with them. Yeah, cool, cool. Sorry, I knew that. I just wanted to clarify for everyone listening. Um, but yeah, so you picked up RX2s in and um, started to learn to, to mix. That's so cool. Yeah, started <laughs> to learn how to mix. Yeah, and, and, and I picked it up pretty quickly because I filmed DJs around the world and, and I have a pretty good idea of, of with technology and stuff like that. So it, it came as second nature to me and I, I was flying within, you know, a couple of months of, and I, I found it like second nature. So yeah, yeah wicked, I picked that up pretty quick quickly and then a as time went on um i started sort of blending that with my visuals and and going okay how can i use this dj deck as a midi controller to send signals to my visual software and so when i trigger like filters and stuff um it, it will it'll trigger effects inside of my program so now wow. uh, I, now i perform as a video dj so i dj and i vj at the same time that's incredible and and when you're linking like these things up, so is that kind of, have you gone out of your way to hook up all these MIDI parameters in the decks or is yep. this like, yeah. are these, is yep. there software able to, to do this yet? Is there so, like, so get this, get this. I tried um, using record box video to trigger pre-made video clips that I made in Adobe Premiere. Cause I'm a videographer and editor. That's kind of like my strength to be honest. And they just weren't triggering at the same time. And um, I was using a program called Spout. And I could get Spout to come out of any other program into Resolum, which is my main VJ software. But out of Recordbox, it just wasn't working. So I contacted um, technical support at Spout and technical support at Recordbox. And I put them in an email chain and said, hey, guys, there's this problem. <laughs> It's kind of fucked. It's not working. It's giving me a black screen. Like, can yeah. you guys please fix this? So they actually built me a custom plugin to test and wow. it worked. So <laughs> I'm kind of like the only one with this plugin. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and the new version um, coming, there, it, it's going to have that functionality built into the, as an update. So I That's actually incredible. changed the game. And, so and you have sense. a hand in the update. That's amazing. Yep, exactly. Yeah, because I, was, I wasn't sure, um, you know, with with our stuff in the band we're working to uh to kind of use midi triggering um within the ableton file so that as the the set is going through midi triggers are being sent to various pedals and effects to to change the sound on stage the next step for us is to have all of the visual stuff that we work on to to be mapped in MIDI time triggered live with the stuff obviously we won't be controlling and vjing but we we're sort of looking at trying to MIDI trigger stuff. So so that kind of thing is really interesting, even though it's a DJ thing. But yeah. yeah, like you could you could have a foot pedal trigger what's called a piano click inside of Resolume. So the long longer you hold it down, the more intense it, that particular effect gets, or Whoa. something like that. So so there's all sorts of things you can do with MIDI inside of Resolume um, that is that's super amazing. So yeah, yeah, I could definitely uh, walk you through that if if you guys get stuck. Yes. but there's, there's plenty. <laughs> There's plenty of tutorials online. I'm actually completely self-taught. Uh, I've, I've had mentors and people, you know, help me get over speed bumps, but 99% of what I do, I've, I've sort of learned um, yeah. with trial well, and error. That's that's something we're big on too, man, because we talk about how great YouTube is as a resource and how many people there are online sharing amazing free knowledge, really. So it's like, you know, you're a testament to that of, of basically picking things up and just jumping in the deep end and kind of going for 
going for it and just yeah, figuring I'll, I'll it out. Yeah, I'll give a massive shout out to Gregory Vidimo Castati, who's the owner of the VJ Union, and he has a website, um, vjunion.io. Man, let me double check that, but we'll put a link in the description. Yeah, and, for um, sure. The, v, the VJ Union is a giant um, knowledge database. Uh, okay, so it's vjun.io, and it's a huge database with dozens, if not hundreds, of articles from um, VJs and lighting technicians and animators from all around the world. And if you have a problem, there's a really, really good chance if you go to the VJ Union website that, or and their Facebook group, who has like I don't know, seventeen thousand members or something. If, if it's not in their knowledge base, you can ask in the forum and in, in, in the Facebook group, and someone will answer your question. And yeah, it's wow. Just, it's, and everyone's super helpful in the group. Like it's a really amazing community. And what Gregory has done is absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's sick, man. Thank you, because that's um that's great to show people communities that are already helping each other out and trying to build knowledge for everybody. Because it's not just like we're unlocking it for everyone to create more amazing stuff. It's not like absolutely you're holding secrets in and all of this, you know. They've got multiple groups: VJ Union Hardware, VJ Union Software, VJ Union like Loops, Buy Sell Trade. Like it's just there's a whole um, gang of stuff that that you can find out from that group. So if you're if you're an aspiring uh, visual artist or a VJ or a DJ and you want to start, you know, making your own visuals or um, playing back loops, that's probably the best place to start. Wicked man, thank you. That's amazing. Now, um, you took you recently took your uh, Spaz show. So tell us a little bit about um the the Spaz show that you're creating uh, as your sort of alias. Like I know a little bit about it with um you know the sort of audio visual DJing and VJing that you're doing now. Um, and you know you recently went to Dubai and um have since then DJed at quite a few amazing events. So tell us a little bit about that and kind of the process of what what you're trying to create vision wise yeah okay so um basically i got the call to go to dubai in february last year um dylan mara from we are cinematic he he owns one of the best production companies in the world uh based out of beverly hills they produce the official parties for uber twitter amazon youtube uh playboy for seven years maxim super bowl the Superverse in Dubai, and this year they're producing the Super Bowl parties for GQ and Rolling Stone magazine. So they, they wow. are a huge production company, and I've been working with them for several years as a videographer. So he said, hey, we're doing this really big activation in Dubai. Can you please come film a behind-the-scenes video? So, um, yeah, I, I came along with my camera, and I told him on the on the call, um, he's like, what have you been up to? I said, oh, I'm like an audio-visual DJ now. He said, oh, that's super cool. Do you want to play the closing set? And I was like, yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I I, so I performed um, live for a, for a couple of thousand people on this huge, uh, like 120 foot wide LED wall, 1.5 million dollar setup. This stage Whoa. was ginormous, hundreds of staff with cranes and everything setting it up. The best <laughs> lighting technicians in the world. Like it was really, really super cool. Um, like five big ass uh, broadcast cameras filming from all angles on the big boom crane and everything. Yes. It was really quite fantastic. And we're gonna drop the video for that with this podcast. I've been saved. I've been holding yes. on to this video for a while now, and we're gonna drop that video with this podcast. <laughs> so excited to show you guys that. Um, yeah, link but, link but, in link in description. <laughs> yeah, link one. in description. Um, but yeah, where's it heading? Well, actually, in two thousand and nine, I came up for the idea to build a dome show, and I ended up writing yes. the script for it in two thousand eleven, and then I met the dome company in two thousand thirteen. So I've been working on this project for about thirteen years now. Wow. And what it, what it, what it is is a giant inflatable dome, so it's portable and inflatable, and can be shipped anywhere in the world. Uh, it fits down into three shipping containers. It takes 26 32,000 lumen uh, Barco projectors to illuminate the interior and the exterior surface of the dome. So it's this huge dome that fits 4,000 people um, standing with, and with IP wow. rises and, and bars and stuff inside. And basically, we're going to tell the story of the creation of the universe. That's insane, man. Well, I mean, I've had the pleasure of uh, seeing a few sneak peeks of, of this show developing. And... Um, you know, it blows me away, really, what what you're capable of, and and what's coming for the the future of entertainment, and this dome all encapsulating show with the full visuals like everywhere around you, is something to behold. And like I've only seen videos of it, so I can't imagine what it's like standing in the the middle of it, absorbing the atmosphere. Um, you said before you were like you you coded everything, so you're coding and mapping it to a a a circular or a dome shape 
thing is that yeah. like you're having to yeah, piece together right. all of these bits of projectors and like uh, that to me blows my mind with complexity a little bit but yeah so our, our company omnispace 360 um who, who are my partners they, they have created this uh patented technology called everbright and so what everbright does is it detects how much picture is going to which part of the dome from each projector and it'll make sure that the brightness is totally even across them all and what it does is that it saves the life on the light bulbs because the bulbs for these projectors are horrendously expensive and um, it extends the lifetime of those bulbs so we're doing everything we can with this show to you know help the environment and do, do things uh, with the most um, you know, eco-friendly energy yeah. and, and everything. And, and our, our, our entire vision with this entire show is actually to save the world. So that's kind of, that's kind of what it is. And, and Spaz as an avatar for me is uh, basically an alien. I'm depicted as an alien from outer space, a uh, robot alien when I'm going to be wearing this crazy suit with a helmet, kind of like Daft Punk in a way. Um, and it's got motion capture built into the suit. So I'll be able to project a giant alien robot onto the dome, onto the screen around everyone, and it will mimic all of my exact moves. And I'll be able to control visuals and sound with, with movements. So you're basically turning yourself into God. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it, it does raise a question. I mean, who, who, who did make us? I mean, we are the aliens that have returned to planet Earth to show you how we made you. And it starts with the Big Bang. And all the planets are forming around you. And then, you know, it, makes, it creates planet Earth. And we go into the water. And it, it, the first cells of life begin forming. And they grow fins and evolve into fish. And then, you know, they, they come out of the water. And we have a, a scene with the dinosaur ages. And there's going to be the dubstep and everything with the T-Rexes. It's going to be super cool. Um, and, then, and then, you know, a big asteroid comes and, and wipes out the dinosaurs, and we go into the Ice Age. And then, you know, the ice melts, and then the spaceship comes back in and builds the pyramids around the audience. And instead wow. of an alien robot, I'm kind of like a pharaoh or an Anubis, and I start casting spells around the audience like frogs and locusts and, and all these mag <laughs> magical things. And um, one thing to really note that's quite incredible about the show is that our friends are... Uh, Synthony, who have gone all across Australia and New Zealand, um, have agreed to bring the Synthony show into the dome. So I'm actually going to be DJing in the center of a 60-piece orchestra with violins and cellos and xylophones and trumpets and drums and everything wow. you can imagine in this orchestra. And it's going to be like the 2023 version of Walt Disney's Fantasia. That's insane. Bro, I, I really, um, yeah, I'm really amazed by this uh, this show. And I know that there's going to be so many people that really, really need to go and see this. Um, one thing we're talking about, like for our sort of whole visual representation, which I really like about what, you, what you're talking about here is telling a story and how like using the whole visual show and the, I presume you're going to have like lighting and maybe pyro CO2, these types of things as well in there. Um, I don't know how fireproof and a, a, a dome is, <laughs> but um, you know, things like this where you, you where you're, you're, you're basically creating an experience around a story that really kind of enhances not only the music, but everything you're trying to represent. Yeah, ex exactly. Because um, I feel like it's a movie mixed with a dance party. It's like yeah. an audiovisual experience, um, you know. And we we figured out how to like tell the story in a way that's like Pixar, Disney, Avatar level kind of graphics, but it's actually generative. So with the locusts, um, you know, during during the plague sort of thing. Um, we're going to have audio inputs from each of the instruments in the orchestra and every single instrument is going to change a different variable inside of our visual system so that the swarm of locusts will like grow and shrink and move as depending on a violin or a Whoa. frequency or a drum hit or everything. So the entire thing, it, the, it makes the show different every single time you come. Whoa, wait. So if you've got, so there's like this locust bug that appears in the visual screen like that's a swarm a, of them, that's, you know? Yeah. Could, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, a whole swarm. Say I'm just picking one, and that one is linked to the trombone. So whenever the trombone goes, wah, this thing goes, wah, like goes, that. Wah, or it changes color, or like, you know, they, or they, they, you know, like they swerve like, an, uh, like a sound wave or something. I mean, I, I can only imagine in my head what it's going to look like live, but that's the general idea. Wow, that's, that's quite mind-blowing, man. I think um, that you know, 
that's the forefront of technology in terms of the audio visual and the the immersive experience it's literally having like yeah just reactive what did, what was the word you used audio um, reactive yeah audio reactive so it's just it's real time stuff um, real time live generated graphics in 360 degrees blasted across a giant 200 foot diameter dome with wow. 26 expensive projectors yes that's insane i i've um i've seen one thing before and i'll have to try and rack my brains to remember where i saw it but it was a crea crowd reaction based uh sort of flame system so but the flames were the visual so the screen had these like flames on it that would come into the side and whenever the crowd made lots of noise more flames would come over the screen so cool. yeah okay. And that's I, I, I did think of having an element like that in the show as well because I want I want people to feel like they're all part of it too. So I did want to include something like that. I just so, don't know yeah. exactly how I'm going to do that yet, but I do know definitely I want to involve the crowd somehow. Because you could just maybe have an overhead mic that just hangs above the crowd and it's like make some noise, and then you just trigger this thing on, and then it's like it does something. Well, well as you remember on some of our um, our our parties we've had um, together, you remember that uh, I've got some audio reactive stuff and we were going blah 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 into the microphone and it was changing the visuals so you could literally have the entire audience you know make full-on visuals not just like lighting yes. or color you could actually make entirely generated visuals that are live that are unique only to that audience's sound man but we're yeah, getting into that, we're getting it's, into it's the realm crazy. of some of some yeah really insane stuff um now like this is only scraping the surface of what you do um now Let's let's sort of fast forward on from Dubai. Take us through from Dubai until present day Costa Rica, where you are currently. So, yeah, okay. So take so, us so, through yeah. all of this. Uh, it's pretty crazy because after I got the call from Dylan, I packed my bags. I got on the first flight out of Australia the day the borders opened. The first wow. flight out to Dubai. I was on the first one. And I anticipated only being in Dubai for like a week and I ended up staying for nine weeks in Dubai. I just went with all my stuff, all my equipment and man, I was carrying, I'm, I had a, a 30 inch touch screen in one of my suitcases inside of its box and I carried it all the way around the world. I went to 13 countries last year and I took my, my, my MIDI controller, like my, my laptop computer, all my clothes, all my bathroom gear and stuff like that. And just all my bits and bobs and all my cables. I even carried a box of Christmas lights everywhere <laughs> with me and my two galaxy lamp projectors. And in every inside of every hotel room, I set it all up with all my glowing lights and everything. Wow, and and all, all, all my all my setup, we'll drop some photos for you guys too. Um, everything's like all rainbow colored lights. And yes, so it's, it is. It's, it's, it's just part of the experience. And when I have people come over and they, and they look at my setup, they go, wow, this is actually pretty cool, you know? So I, I took I, so I took all that with me, two big suitcases and my laptop um, carry-on uh, suitcase. Yeah. And so, yeah, basically um, stayed in Dubai for nine weeks. I bumped into a guy um, at a beach club and um, I was like, oh, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm in real estate and from the Gold Coast. And I was like, oh, okay, I filmed a lot of videos of real estate in the Gold Coast. And, and, he, and I'm like, what buildings do you have? He's like, oh, we're in the Circle and Cavill and the Hilton. And I'm like wait, is your company called You Stay? He said, yeah, it used to be, but now it's called Q Stay. And I'm like, Jason? And he's like, Alex? And I'm like, oh my God. I've been working with this guy for four years and have never met the boss. No and way. so he's like, oh, come, come and stay stay with us for a bit. Hey, Jason Hawthorne. And hey, to his dad, Glenn, um, thanks for, you know, accommodating me in Dubai. It, was, it, it helped a lot because on my journey, I had no idea like where I was going to stay, where I was going to go. Like it was all just kind of on the yeah, fly. Yeah, let's, let's touch on that really quickly. Um, that's so true. You so you had no plan in terms of like other than just going to Dubai for this initial event, and you just were like, "Look, I'm just gonna go. Trust my gut and follow follow this because I want to do it." Is Pretty that much. like? Is I that can, it? I can. Uh, the metaphor I would give for that is it's like jumping out of a plane without a parachute and building it on the way down. <laughs> living life on the edge <laughs> yeah but but i always trust the universe and i know the universe has always got my back and it wants me to win and that's like the same for all you guys out there the universe has got your back and it wants you to win and you just have to trust the universe that when you trust the universe more and more magic happens and the more magic happens the more and the more you get used to it and you normalize it oh yeah. not be freaked out like oh my god i can't believe this just happened the more you normalize these things happening the more they occur yeah and, and the, the universe and the machine elves and the matrix will just deliver exactly what you want over and over again 
So, so after after a year, I met Jason and stayed with him for for a while. Um, I ended up meeting uh, Miss Germany. Um, and doing a photo shoot, because I'm a, a photographer and videographer, and I've shot over a thousand models around the world, um, some of the most beautiful women in the world, and yeah, I, I kind of like fell in love with Miss Germany, I thought she, I thought she was just the best thing ever, um, and, 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 and then uh, she lives in Monaco, so I made this plan to like meet up with her in Monaco for the Grand Prix, um, so then what happened was I got a call to go to, to Tulum in Mexico, and uh, for my business partners, so I went there for a month to do some stuff in Tulum, and Tulum was amazing, like it's a super cool place, um, you got to check out Tulum. Loom. It's a total yeah. vibe all on its own. And then, yeah, it was time to go to the Formula One. Um, and I was expecting this like major investment to come through uh, for one of my projects and it just didn't come. So I was stuck in Monaco with no money and no, no like, I was, and it's the most expensive city in the world. Like, yeah. oh, $12 especially for a can around, of Coke. Like, wow. Especially around Grand Prix time. I'm around sure. Grand Prix time. But I, but I hustled, man. And I, and I was like, I was like, how am I going? Cause, cause then I was supposed to get the tickets for me and Miss Germany to go on this yacht. And then like, I couldn't afford them anymore because of this stupid thing. So I told her, oh babe sorry they like fell through and she's like oh well I just got a job from working for McLaren so I'm gonna do that I said okay cool and I sent her on her way and then um I was like stuck in Monaco with no money and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do so then I was like walking along the beach and I thought okay I'm gonna pull the parachute I'm gonna pull the parachute I'm gonna call dad and be like dad can you please buy me a flight from <laughs> Monaco to Australia I'm you know yeah. I, 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 I'm defeated yeah and then I, I, and then I sat on a park bench and I pulled my phone out of my pocket and dad was ringing me and I was like, Whoa. oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I answered the phone. Like, hey, Dad, how's it going? And Dad's like, yeah, yeah, good. How are you? How's Monaco? I said, oh, yeah, it's, it's not bad, you know. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, he's like, uh, and he's like, well, are you sitting down? And I said, um, yeah. He said, um, well, it happened again. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you've got another sister. Because this happened, this happened 11 years ago. 11 years ago, JJ Feeney, um, who's one of the top radio presenters in, in New Zealand, she's won all the awards. She's on TV, on Dancing with the Stars, and she's on, on Women's Day magazine every few months, and she's a bit of a celebrity in New Zealand. Hey, JJ. Um, <laughs> and and she, she never knew who her real dad was, but then like 11, 12 years ago, she eventually reached out and got in contact. And it turns out, like my dad was a DJ and a re radio DJ for 33 years, and she grew up to do the exact same thing with Without even knowing who wow. he was. There you so go. So it goes to show that what you do is somehow, somehow pass through the genes. Yeah, it is, eh? Which is which is crazy. But but fast forward, let's let's talk about my next sister, Erin. So dad's like, Yeah, you've got another sister, her name's Erin, she's fifty years old, she lives in England in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, Really? England is only a one hour flight away from me. Yeah. You're like, oh, so, that's close. He's, he's like, sorry, sorry. He's like, all right, I'm going to send you a number now. I'm like, sweet, I'll go give her a visit. So I rang her up and I'm like, hey, Erin, how's it going? And she's like, oh, hey, bro. <laughs> How are you, Alex? I was <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, yeah, good. Um, I'm, uh, she's like, where are you? I said, I'm in Monaco. She goes, oh, that's not too far. And I said, yeah, do you want a visitor? And she's like, yeah, I've got like two spare bedrooms. I hope you don't mind dogs. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so off I was on a plane to go meet my new sister who just popped out of nowhere at That's the exact so moment like you another needed sister it. Yeah. like I needed it so I so, so I stayed with her for a month and I worked on um my projects and like and then I started getting some money in the door again and and um yeah basically then I got the call from um Dennis Kujman who uh, I've been I've been doing online business with for the last few years but never really met in person he said hey Spaz I saw you're in uh, England um, we've got a show uh, for Solana which is like a top blockchain company um and we we we're doing a big party with one of our top DJs in Slovakia called Switch to Smile. Hey, Ivan. Yes. And, um, and yeah, can you come film for us? I said, fuck yeah, and I got on the trains. <laughs> so then I'm all, so I got on the train, I went to, went to London, and then, uh, and then, yeah, filmed this event for them, and they're like, oh, where, where are you living right now? What are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm at my sister's house in, in uh, the middle of nowhere, in England, yeah. like the middle of nowhere. And... Uh, <laughs> And they're like, oh, well, come to Slovakia, man. We've got like a spare room. We've got, you know, the studio of DJ Dex and we throw parties there and everything. Come <laughs> work with us. I was like, fuck yeah. So then I was off to Slovakia. Wow, man. That's a bit like, as you were saying before, just like literally jumping in the deep end and just taking these opportunities and being open to them and receptive to, to the fact that they might come along. You know, it's like really just it's like going for it and then seeing this opportunity and going, you know what, why not? Like a lot of people would be too scared to even like fathom doing something like that. But yeah, you know, I mean, like, it, it's, it's terrifying. High risk, high reward though. Like if you true. always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. 
So you've got to go true. outside the boundaries and you've got to break those boundaries and, and do something that you would usually not be willing to do in order to get a result that you otherwise probably wouldn't get. Yeah, that's right, bro. That's insane. So so then Slovakia and 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 how did that lead you to Costa Rica? <laughs> so yeah, well, um, I mean, there was all these other countries in between, like there was an overnight in Scotland and an overnight in Turkey and stuff. But so I yeah. can kind of count them as, as as countries I visited. But but um, then yeah, I got the call from my business partner, and he said, "Hey, Alex, we've got this opportunity um, to do to work on some like real estate and you know some events and stuff here in Costa Rica. Um, we've got a bedroom for you here at this really nice." house I'm, I'm in this beautiful like three million dollar house five stories seven bedrooms eight bathrooms. Uh, yeah like, this, i, I this did place see your video insane. yeah <laughs> yeah you can check that out on beautiful. my instagram um but yeah so i've got i've got i've got the top bedroom now with this beautiful view of all of san jose like this is the most incredible place i've ever stayed in um wow. and and yeah now i've been working on uh the, yeah this this company idonius which is like blockchain technology for uh trading luxury assets yeah, cool. That's insane, um, bro. We've well come done. on board as their official media uh, partners. And so, yeah, so now I'm in Costa Rica. Um, and then um, I guess we had a few house parties here. The guys have been here for a little bit longer than I have. And then um, they invited uh, Will Umana and David Kuhn over for a, for a little bit of a party at our house. And I got talking with them and I was showing them like some of my stuff. And Will said, hey, man, I'd love you you'd come do visuals at Pineapple Paradise Records parties called Pineapple. And um, we've got a really big event coming up in Halloween. So, yeah, I took my VJ equipment over and I played some visuals. I didn't DJ. I was just doing the visuals. And um, yeah. Yeah, blew blew everyone's mind basically because Costa Rica <laughs> is like twenty years behind everywhere else, yes, if you know what I mean, in, in yeah. its own way. And so people had never seen that stuff before, you know. Wow. And I've got some really amazing three D animations from all the best artists around the world, um, and and huge plugs from the VJ Union guys. So yeah, basically they loved what I did, and then they invited me to play another show on December the tenth. And I absolutely rocked this show on December the tenth. Huge LED wall, just doing the visuals again, but like I. I brought the collective consciousness of this entire room of 2,400 people to a single point. And like my visuals was changing the energy of the entire room. Like I would do things and the whole crowd would start cheering and the DJ didn't do anything. Like the music <laughs> yeah. was the same. The music was the same. And it was like, oh my God. And then, yeah. and then you know, and then, and, and then, and then like I was just absolutely rocking it. Right. And then um, I, I, I decided to walk up to the um, DJ booth and um, DJ Max Chap Chapman, who was the uh, headliner, he picked me up over the DJ decks and held me in front of the whole crowd like Simba from The Lion King. And everyone was like, yeah. And they passed me a beer and I sculled the whole beer in one go. And then I smashed the bottle on stage and glass went everywhere. And everyone was like, yeah. No way. And, then, and, then, and then he put me down and I did the peace sign with two hands, did the peace sign and everyone around me in 360 all did the peace sign. That's it so was amazing. Good. I I felt like I was um I became a part of Costa Rica that night. <laughs> it was really Dude, quite that's... magical. One of the best nights of my life. That sounds wicked. That's so much fun. Man, Costa Rica looks insane and sounds amazing. So I'm sure it's a whirlwind experience. And you you don't know where you're heading next or are you sort of start staying there uh, for I'm, a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm basing myself here now. So I'm going to be here until May. And then in May, I'm going to be heading to the Formula One again. Um, yeah, cool. So going to go back around, and I mean, uh, I mean, I I, I forgot um, to mention uh, when I went to Slovakia, I, we, we took a trip together to Croatia for Ultra Music Festival, and wow. um, we we got um, AAA artist um, wristbands so we could go backstage, and we were hanging out with Hardwell and you know so all, cool. all these top DJs, met above and beyond, and um, was telling you know Hardwell about about my projects and stuff, and he thought it was amazing too. He actually t said everyone, he's everyone in the room, this is the next Mark Zuckerberg right here. <laughs> Did he really? So, so yeah, he did in front of everyone. So to, to have Hardwell say something like that was was quite special. Um, but yeah, then we went we went to Ibiza for ten days, and Ibiza is insane on another level. The nightclubs and the culture and the parties and everything in Ibiza is on another level. So I'm hoping to make it back back there again next um, this this year. Yeah, yeah 2023. Um, so yeah, we, we, we're going to do the full circuit. I really want to go to Tomorrowland. I really want to go to a whole bunch of things. But I've also um, been invited to play at Burning Man this year on, a, on, the, on the biggest LED wall stage uh, hosted by Melt Interactive. Um, so I'm hoping to get the visa and everything in time to get to Burning Man this year because I think that would be an amazing opportunity and, and it looks Absolutely. like the coolest festival in the world and I, I'd love to, to become a part of that, that culture. So Man. yeah, definitely definitely down for Burning Man. 
and that's on the list. Um, but yeah, apart from that, the, the, one of the, my high priorities is getting this dome show up and running because the dome is currently built and sitting in a warehouse in Las Vegas. It's ready to go. I'm just um, seeking Series A funding right now so that I can um, put it into the animations and the construction and everything and, uh, and, and hopefully launch that this year. Um, I, I think yeah. we're going to pull it off. I, I believe in you, bro. I th I've seen, um, yeah, seen how much work you put in behind the scenes. So I know that that's gonna, it's gonna blow up. Literally, like a blow up. It's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow up. It takes a couple of days to blow the thing up. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very slow blowing up. But anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. One thing I want to uh, talk to you about is, um, well, actually, have you share with everybody is uh, this concept um, that you've come up with called EDM TV um, and and from what I've seen you know like this this is a, a bit of a hole in the market that um, has been missing for quite a while and I think that you know it kind of gives me these old school MTV vibes and like you know V hits where you had like just you know constant music on channels with visuals and stuff but then this is the future version this is like encompassing all of these cool things that you're doing and putting it in one place for people so can you just like maybe yeah run down edm tv um, yeah i'll give you everyone? the spiel yeah so electronic dance music television network is basically imagine imagine if netflix and spotify had a baby <laughs> that would be EDM TV. So we've created apps for Apple TV, Roku, Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, PlayStation, Xbox, iPhone, and Android. And you can go into this app and you can stream music videos from all the biggest record labels and all your favorite artists from around the world. Um, and it's really cool because we've beat matched the music videos together in key like a DJ mix. So you don't get that awkward stop and start between the music videos. It just flows like a DJ mix. So when you're having a house party, it's not like YouTube where like it ends and another one starts and then there's an ad and like, nah, no, there's none of that. So, um, so it's kind of beautiful what we've done there. Um, we've got master license agreements with all the top record labels in the dance music industry, which allows us to broadcast and monetize their content globally. So it's going to be a subscription-based model, but we're also building on the blockchain. So uh, we've got this technology um, and this coin that we're, we're basically launching that allows people to like tip artists and buy their NFTs through the platforms and stuff uh, like that. Um, and it's, it's super cool stuff. Now, one thing that we have done that is quite significant is uh, we've, we've been working with Verizon Digital for the last six years. Uh, they are the number one internet service provider in the world and own 11% of the world's internet. Mm. And we've been working with their development team to create a unique streaming profile. So what that is, is uh, we're using a new codec, uh, which is four times higher quality and four times lower file size than the standard H.264 codec that is used by YouTube and, and uh, Instagram and Netflix and, and, and all these other platforms. So it's mu it loads much faster and it's much higher quality. And also it's um, compatible with Dolby Atmos 8.1 surround sound at 448 kilobytes per second audio. So people who make their stuff uh, configured for Dolby Atmos can actually take advantage of that using the streaming profile. And uh, I mean, that's one of the problems with YouTube. The free version of YouTube is, is capped at 128 kilobytes per second audio. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's horrendous, true. right? And yeah. and so for an artist, if you put your stuff on YouTube, unless you have the YouTube premium, it's going to sound like garbage compared in comparison to EDM TV stream. Yeah, so wow. um, that, that, that's quite significant. Um, but yeah, we're, we're um, hoping to launch um, this year. Uh, we're launching in Costa Rica first. We, we've, we've got a team of photographers and videographers. We're going to shoot all the people in the crowd and do all these recap videos and just totally take over Costa Rica um, and, and then put, them in, put it into the app, build the um, you know, subscriber base and, and kind of just go from there. So yeah, really excited to launch EDM TV. We've been working on it for eight years now and it's yeah. been a labor of love, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well... Tens of thousands of hours has gone into this thing, and guys, it's, it's you, you're gonna love it. It's beautiful. There's something on there for, for everybody. There's over a hundred episodes already edited in the can. I mean, you've got a hip hop episode, trance episodes. You've got a Tiesto 1990s throwback. You have got the dubstep episodes. It's really <laughs> got everything. You know, it's got the drum and bass. It's got the techno. Um, e every single uh, EDM genre and is in there. You know. That's very cool, man. Uh, yeah, like, as I said, I've had the pleasure of seeing you work on these projects for quite a while. So to see them coming to where they are and to be able to, uh, you know, see them hitting the world stage is like, is awesome. And yeah, I'm proud of what you've been doing, man. It's wicked. So Thanks so much. 
um, Jordan. It, it means a lot. Um, one, one thing that happened that was kind of crazy was uh, when I was in Monaco, I was at the live streaming film festival, which just happened to be across the road from where I was staying. And I met this guy who invited me to London to speak in Parliament about EDM TV. That's so I right. Actually, I actually went to the House of Lords in Parliament to do a, a six-minute speech about EDM TV in front of a couple hundred people. And... Yo, the, everyone erupted in applause, and there was a line of people waiting to speak to me afterwards for an hour and a half. It was wow. absolutely insane. And so I met some, made some really amazing contacts um, in London, um, yeah, it, speaking in Parliament. I'd never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd be <laughs> yeah, in the I, House I remember, of Lords. Yeah, I remember <laughs> yeah. you seeing, seeing a photo, and I was like, wow, Alex is speaking in Parliament about EDM TV. That's amazing. Um, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. bro. Well, um, I reckon we, like... I could honestly, I could chat to you for ages, um, but I think maybe we'll wrap this one up. Um, maybe we can have you on again in the future to talk and get into some really nitty gritty visual stuff and kind of like the technical details of things. Once, especially we've got our visual side more like clued in. So then, you know, I might have a little bit more to offer in terms of talking about that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I just wanted to shine a light on what you do and um, kind of give everybody a bit of a, hey watch out for for spaz and what's coming so yeah man thank you so much for coming on and uh, i'm glad we could do this hey you're welcome thank you so much for having me jordan um always love seeing your face bro uh honestly we've had some pretty amazing times together and i think there's there's many more to be had in the future and i mean sneak peek jordan's actually involved in the spaz dome as well <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoiler oh, oh, and the, and as I said that, all the lights turned off in my room and then went back on again. Whoa, did it again. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Whoa. funny because it it, you're, look, you're looking around the um, spaceship. And, then, like... and, and they're like, yeah, I'm actually just in my bedroom. But like, it was weird, man. As we did that, all the lights went off. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, super, uh, super grateful um, to be on your podcast. Thank you so much. And to everyone out there, um, hit me up on Instagram. It's just spaz. Um, yep. I T S J U S T S P A Z Z uh, or Ale Alex Curson A L E X C U R S O N link in bio link in yeah man we'll chuck all here. your links um in all of the show notes and everything make sure people can find you so yeah wicked man thank you once again excellent cheers bro spaz right. out bye <laughs> so there we have it that was Alex uh, as you can tell um there's so much going on with Alex in his life that's very exciting there's so many new uh, technologies and things that he's working with. I just was really excited to shine lights on what he's doing and uh, see if there's any takeaways that you might see uh, for your own projects or for, you know, for something in the future that you may be working towards, or even just something you want to go and experience like the Dome Show. I mean, to me, from the pictures I've seen and, and maybe hit up some of the links below and check out his profile and see what he's working on. It's some pretty crazy, mind-blowing stuff. So yeah, once again, thanks, Alex, for coming on. A um, few last things before I wrap up here. Again, if you haven't heard Alter Ego, that's out at the moment. Go and stream that. Uh, we've got uh, another uh, song coming out, hopefully in the next uh, month or so. So uh, keep an ear out for that one. Otherwise, keep supporting the podcast, the tutorials, all of those things, socials. Thanks for being a part of the Distorted Views project, and we'll see you again for the next episode. Bye.